Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Indian Chess Society, I extend a warm welcome to all of you for this webinar today. I am Anjula Datta, coordinator of the Training and Education Initiatives, Indian Chess Society. Today, we bring to you a webinar catering to all your questions before giving a hammer feedback. As for our viewers who are watching us for the first time, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce ICS to you. The Indian Chess Society, or ICS as we call it, is a not-for-profit registered society for respiratory, pulmonary, and other physicians with interest in the speciality of respiratory medicine. A committee of eminent chess physicians, who were also the founding members, took up the task to prepare the constitution of this society. Indian Chess Society brings to you Hermes 3.0, a respiratory update, all you need to know about the Hermes experiment. Today, we have with us Dr. Nitin Abhyankar, HOD, Pulmonary Medicine, Pune Hospital and Research Center, Pune, and a pass out of the Hermes examination from the year 2008. We welcome you, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Along with that, we have our panelists today as Dr. Sham Krishnan from the 2017 Hermes Batch, Dr. Abhishek Pei, Dr. Riya Shah, and Dr. Shubham Sharma, who passed out the Hermes examination in the year 2019, and also our very recent pass out, Dr. Hariharan Ayer from the 2021 Hermes Batch. We are honored to have you all present here today. Thank you for joining us. And let's hope that our viewers can learn a great deal about the Hermes examination from this webinar. Over to you, Dr. Nathan. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. I think it has been a pleasure uh, to be uh, coming on this particular platform. And it's a matter of a lot of pride for me. The first ever ERS that I attended was 2004. And the exam that I gave was 2008. So I am I am the Adi Manu of this particular <laughs> exam. Yeah, in fact, I am already extinct in that sense uh, from the point of view of my diploma expired in 2018, and I'm now supposed to actually uh, give it back again. So I'll be relearning a lot of things from the other recent pass out. So and I think I hope that makes it a very interesting session for me as well as because I'm invested as much as the rest of the crowd is. So uh, this, uh, let me, uh, before I start asking questions, let me take a minute and uh, explain how it was for me. Very frankly, I was completely not so well prepared in the true sense of the word. I was just practicing my medicine and uh, I decided just on the spur of a moment, so it was just three months and the last date was approaching and I just applied and I, uh, whatever I could do to practice multiple choice questions, because by then I was not doing multiple choice questions. I was facing questions from the patients most of the times because I was 20 years into the practice when I appeared for this exam. And what I realized was, the, and, and this I have written in the ERS uh, feedback also, and it is there in the ERS, if you go to Hermes site, my, my first, first feedback is there because I was one of the first pass outs and my name part is Abhyankar. So though I was not the top of that particular year, but it comes out as a first response. So, <laughs> so in simple words, what it meant was, it how it worked out for me was it was like a grand clinical round. So there was a case after case after case. And the typical, the, the difficulty part of it was that there were almost zero non-guessable answers. So, you know, typically in, in the past, whatever multiple choice questions exams I had given, they were like, you know, the answers could be eliminated saying, ke ye do to nahi ho sakte. And this also mostly is not possible. So mostly I'm left with only one. And then I could guess the answer here. It was impossible because those four answers were so close because there's a huge long stem. All the four answers seemed correct. And unless until you really knew the answer, it was not possible to really guess that answer. And that is where, that is that is the real crux of the matter. And therefore, practice knowing your clinical medicine is important and practicing multiple choice questions is the key. So with that, I think I'm going to uh, enough from my side and uh, let me invite one by one people and ask them individual questions. And if somebody wants to, I'll, I'll start with a one question per person and then, you know, whatever, if somebody wants to add anything at that point in time about that question, please do feel uh, free to add it. So uh, it's not going to be a formal thing, but I'll just start, you know, by just a sequence to make it easy as a flow. 
So first invite is I think Dr. Sham Krishnan because he's the senior most after me, and uh, though he looks much much younger than the some of the other Dr. Hari Bharan is much much senior possibly, but uh, Sham, you are 2017, and you are a consultant pulmonologist in CK Birla Hospital, Kolkata. Is that right? So I think that's that's your uh, hey. Anything else you want to tell about you? In any case, you will be uh, free to say that. So uh, uh, first of all. Uh, what prompted you to take this exam like what i said so what prompted you and how did you prepare for this exam you are on the mute so you have to unmute yourself yeah yeah so it all started when a lot of my colleagues were taking uh, especially the ones in critical care were taking their exam for the european diploma in intensive care the edic yeah. and they were discussing how tough it is and that's when i start to explore whether such an uh, you know analogous exam exists for uh, the respiratory medicine as well um, so then i came to know about uh, the hermes exam and uh, the european diploma so then i thought i'll give it a try and uh, usually it just started that way because i wanted something to test my uh, you know knowledge and uh, uh, the the way i practice evidence medicine or uh, you know a global knowledge which is practiced worldwide i just wanted to standardize my way of uh, practice and my knowledge so then i thought it might as well uh, yeah, you know and, the, and even hermes is proposing it as a self assessment test so i think that's 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 the way it is uh, it is been proposed by them also so very right. right and how did you sort of how did you go about preparing because i think you had different sets of skills by the time uh, because this was 9 8 9 yes. years after me so uh, so you know i went through so that time we didn't have uh, so you had couple of so i had a couple of my colleagues in the uk who had gone for the summer school there okay uh, so i actually took feedback from them as to how to prepare for it and all that so they gave me insights about you know going through all the latest guidelines you need to uh, be aware of and uh, they told me about uh, the monographs which you need to uh, especially for certain topics and if you have time in the world to read about it okay. and uh, at least about the latest articles and latest studies yeah uh, landmark trials so they basically told me that's how uh, they're going to frame the questions and that's how they're going to design uh, the clinical scenarios so that's how i started uh, preparing excellent uh, shub i can see shubham so i will ask him uh, shubham you are from can you tell me you uh, we, where you are from sorry mgm healthcare sir and all also so 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 shubham so so uh, dr shubham comes from mgm healthcare and i think he's working with one of the best teams which works in the lung transplants and a very advanced critical care so uh, welcome dr shubham and I, i'll ask you similar same questions more or less and then we can take one more question for you so whatever he said how did you prepare because you are 2019 pass out is that if if i'm not wrong so yeah. i passed out uh, uh, my 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 post graduation in, in the year 2018 and yeah. you know like like you know it it is mostly uh, by word of mouth that i actually came to know about it dr sham was my senior when i was doing post graduation so i came to know about it from him and obviously uh, then i discussed it with dr dhar who was my mentor dr raja dhar so i mean being a, a, a marwadi i wanted because i've had to uh, you know spend money on the exam i wanted to discuss about uh, why should i write uh, write the exam what is the benefit it is going to give it excellent uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, you know the, the only thing that actually uh, gave me the sparkle in my eyes about the exam was uh, it was not just going to uh, give me that uh, sort of a degree that people aim for it was also going to give me uh, the the update about how and where i stand compared to the peers in the rest of the world especially the europe right. this was not just uh, to uh, pass the exam it was also to keep yourself updated because this is one exam that you have to write every 10 years and the, i feel the sheer reason behind it would be that you keep updating yourself Absolutely. and you don't lag behind the rest of the world especially the newer pulmonologists who will be always coming up who will be always more updated compared to you and i think uh, the self assessment that this exam gives is also uh, to assess uh, or to actually uh, give you that idea that 
you have to keep yourself updated and uh, i no no pulmonologist or no physician actually wants to lag behind the rest of the world when it comes to the clinical practice so uh, i think that was the idea behind uh, uh, writing this exam and uh, the, it the, it was the help of all the mentors like you know you yourself the, you know there were very few diplomats in the country uh, yeah. at that point of time it's and a very small group all over the world if you really look at it is maybe at the most thousand strong so it's not very large group of hermes diplomats all over the world exactly so the numbers is, exactly. numbers are very very tiny comparatively exactly so you know i i uh, speak to a lot of young people and i tell them to write this exam and uh, people are like uh, what benefit is it going to give uh, give me if i'm just going to practice in india so it's not about just the benefit of just writing the degree behind your name it is also about you know the the thing, the fact that you have to keep yourself updated it's it's an ever evolving world if i if we compare uh, compare it with edic exam also uh, so diploma in critical care it is all about updating this is a field that is changing continuously i mean things and guidelines have changed even when compared to uh, the time i started my post graduation so uh, you have to keep yourself updated and this exam provides you that, that opportunity which you might not have if you are just continuing your practice you might not not find that time to do that did you attend any preparatory course in india for this uh, at that time there was no preparatory course in in the country so i uh, i just uh, went through the materials provided by the european respiratory society including the self assessment handbook that uh, that is there for the exam that actually gave me the most amount of updates and it's not just doing those questions and mcqs that are there in the uh, in the book but also going back and reading about what those questions are because they put a lot of effort and research into framing one question this gives you a real life scenario it is not just one exam like it is in most of the exams in our country where the questions are just to you know um, uh, screw around with your brain and uh, to make you uh, score less it is also about the real life scenarios that you might handle in the regular practice excellent uh, uh, dr I, I i guess dr hari haran is also there uh with us and i'll uh, invite him er dr aryan are you here with yeah. us yes sir so you are oh, sir uh, actually i am not that old as you introduced me i have just passed in 2015 okay uh, i did pass you out my d in 20 you are an assistant professor in department of pulmonology in ims jodhpur no yes yeah. yes yes yeah just just joined a month ago okay and you are actually a 2021 uh, harmis uh, uh, yeah. pass out so i think you it's, yeah. it's going to be interesting because you probably gave it much later after passing out your md isn't it yeah so i think i was doing my dm from all india institute of medical science in uh, delhi yeah so i was for after md i did my dm there so correct years uh, i did not find time to be honest to study and give exam because it's a very hectic course as you know So uh, I did it after I passed out my DM actually. So, okay. Yeah. So in 2020, and I, actually there was also the issue of COVID in 2020. So one year was lost because of that as well. So. Correct. Correct. Uh, where, where, did you use a preparatory course? I don't think it was happening, na? That at that time. Uh, actually, the one ICS was conducting some resources, some online educational materials, which I Correct. had attended. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think Dr. Vishweshwaran was there. Dr. Raja Dhar was there. so Correct. they had a sort of you know uh, given practice mcqs and uh, what is the pattern of the exam so what can we expect so as the participants dr sham has uh, and uh, you know they have told it is not one liner so basically i attended that to just have a you know feel of the exam correct although your knowledge actually is uh, tested very much in detail as you have said including yes. all the uh, you know clinical aspects yeah. Yeah. and uh, as you said the scope for guesswork is very less yes. you have to be thorough with the guidelines and the the you know the ers guidelines which they have on their educational yeah. website i mean on their website uh, those guidelines uh, do make a difference so i would also request all the participants to go through these guidelines because they are updated uh, continuously yeah i'll i'll tell you a, i'll tell you an official secret uh, which is open secret sort of that we in 2016 underwent a course uh, about forming questions and they gave us a 3 hours course on that 
the Hermes people, and they told us how to design questions. So we have been contributing questions. I, I have been contributing questions to Hermes exam. So everybody who has passed out has an opportunity to actually become an examiner also. Of course, you can't leak it out to anybody else naturally, but at the same time, uh, and, and, and the typical way they teach you is to give a long story, convoluted story, or not necessarily convoluted, but a complex clinical story, and four very, very close answers where guesswork is impossible. So that is that is how the whole structure of that particular question is. The other thing before I sort of go on to everybody else is one more thing which I realized or uh, was there is that there are some importance given to even respiratory physiology. Some importance was given to lung functions. There are two questions dedicated to only ethics. And in fact, the ethics are a little different in our context as compared to the European context sometimes. So mm -hmm. we, were, we are more likely to you know, not understand their concept of ethics as much as, you know, uh, because our uh, practice realities are somewhat different sometimes. So I think these are the trick areas. So I think we should not be ignoring. So I think the course curriculum uh, gives you a clear idea as to what to expect in the exam. And they don't cheat you. There they are no sudden unexpected questions. So there is enough importance given to everything. Clinical medicine, of course, occupies good 65-70% of the questions. But uh, there are questions on the other important sub things also. For example, oncology. There'll be two or three questions definitely on oncology. So it has to be, you know, respiratory oncology, of course. So I think we have to be doing those or connective tissue disorder. So I think everything matters. Nothing is unimportant. Including, uh, if I yes, may just interrupt, including please, sleep. Please. Including sleep. Actually, the sleep questions also, they give actually your hypnograms and EEG waves. Correct. And, uh, you know, you have to be actually well-versed with them. It's not just a basic knowledge of, uh, it's not superficial knowledge is not sufficient. Correct. You know, Very right. Uh, anything else, uh, Sham or Shubham, you want to add to this? Uh, I'll just add to that. Uh, so, it's not just the ethics. So, uh, this is something that I was wanting to say. So, there are... Uh, two things that differ completely with the European guidelines in, in the exam uh, uh, questions that we actually practice. So we yeah. tend to practice everything which is guideline based. The difference, the biggest difference is in the treatment of TB that, uh, that the questions that they ask about tuberculosis. So those are completely different. So it is important that the people writing the exam understand that and write the answer or the uh, questions that are about tuberculosis according to what is as per their guidelines guidelines and not practices uh, uh, practice the same in our country because our guidelines are a little bit different. So that's what I would like to add. Correct. Uh, I think Dr. Abhishek Faya is with us. Uh, yes, Abhishek, sir. Can you hear, hear me? And uh, he's a consultant pulmonologist in Gatwell Hospital, Nagpur, and he passed it in 2019. So Abhishek, uh, you must have used the preparatory course, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, I think at our time, it was the first time. It was ah. exam was at Kolkata and the right. preparatory course was held at Varanasi. So you are the right uh, person to answer these questions uh, about how, how well organized was the exam in India. Give us some details, city, venue, organizations, facilities, whatever you know where you were provided. And if there are any lack in it, please tell that also. But uh, you can criticize us a little less. And if you can, but I mean, whatever, I mean, the good and bad and the ugly, everything we need to know. Can you tell uh, us okay. about how you went through that? Uh, so initially the exam, uh, regarding exam, I came to know from my seniors, a couple of my seniors, they went to London at that time uh, yeah. when the ERS conference was held there. So they had given the exam and they told that how good it is. And uh, it is like completely like MRCP respiratory medicine. So uh, that's what their experience was. So after yeah. that, I had decided to write the exam. Um, okay. uh, but luckily, it was in India uh, after that uh, at Kolkata. So, we, I had also attended a preparatory course at Varanasi. Yeah. So, uh, at that time, what uh, uh, what was told to us was that it is actually a three day course which they tried to squeeze in two days. So, it yeah. was really hectic in Varanasi at that time. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think I was there in Varanasi, if I'm not wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they had also, uh, I mean, they had uh, uh, compressed all the topics into a single PPT and gave different topics. At that time, a three or four, I think, ERS uh, teachers were also there uh, who had gone down from there for the uh, teaching. Correct. Apart from the Guliraya sir and everybody was there, all the senior yeah. faculties from India. Yeah. 
so that was that was good i mean the material could give us a very good idea basic idea about the topic each topic uh, so we re- we had revised that those ppts also before exam and uh, regarding the exam at kolkata so it was very well organized i mean uh, better than what we had all expected at that time uh, the, i mean the venue standard and time management everything uh, everything was great okay and uh, one question which is coming from usaina to me is is that handbook enough or do you need a preparatory course in the true sense or you know do you need a little more so they so, uh, no. uh so frankly uh, from my side what i would have said is that uh, actually i have read the ppts but not all yeah. so uh, the the handbook there are two handbooks one is the yeah. theory and one yeah. is the mcq one correct so i had the mcq handbook soft copy with me at that time so from yeah. my senior so yeah. i had only, i had only read that so yeah. even by reading that uh, i mean i could i could tell through the exam but i would yeah. i would definitely say if i would have read all the ppts also in detail then i might have scored even better correct yeah. in fact i have a suggestion for uh, you know the, the people who are hope, uh, hoping to appear is one of the things which you can do is practice your uh, presentations in a, i mean mcqs in a group so what you could do is form a group of four five people take a senior teacher to you know even pose questions to you and practice so on daily basis if you are say preparing for 3 months if you know in 3 months in advance so daily at least 10 questions you should write and time yourself because the time is the essence here and uh, another thing which i will suggest of course is uh, if i'm wrong please any of you should correct me if i don't know an answer to a particular question don't spend 5 minutes on that because the time again is in essence you have to write 90 questions in two and a half hours so that means if i don't know for sure that this i am not really aware of this answer i should move on to the next question and complete everything in time and then come back and come back and then sort of just make an attempt to solve those difficult questions in the end again usually you will still be left with 10 or 15 minutes because what you know you know what you don't know you don't know generally that is the story you can't just keep out guessing yourself and get the answers right so it doesn't matter and there is something called as percentile so it's not like that you have to score 90% so abhishek may i ask you how much did you score i mean is that a secret or can uh, did you top or whatever anybody who has stopped i want to know that you know in the exam because i did not i mean let me tell you i was just a, i was just a borderline cut over pass so you know just just about passed i'm not sure if there is a uh, way to oh. know if you have topped or they don't award you <laughs> hi 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 ria yeah, abhyanka yes sir yes yes uh, with your questions i had uh, topped the exam oh great congratulations ria Thank you. you must tell us how did you top your secrets <laughs> no actually actually there were no secrets you know it was just the self assessment handbook and i think uh, when you solve the book for the first time you understand where you are weak particularly so uh, my weakness was uh, sleep and uh, you know after each question they give you a reference uh, the reference could be either a guideline or it should it could be a paper so i had gone further to just reading a bit about you know whichever topic they had a little bit more in detail from the references and of course as uh, already discussed the guidelines uh, which ers has already given yes. those and of course uh, i gave my exam one year after passing md yeah so things were still very fresh like physiology and everything but a brush up of the basics was also needed yeah so Probably. i think i'll ask you that question and to everybody else also is that the best time you know as early as you can after you have passed out or a few years like a person like me did it 20 years after into the practice but i had no option but if you have an option is it a good idea to give it early because your clinic your memory is fresh uh, you have read a lot for your MB, md or dm exams whatever uh, mm-hmm. your qualifications you have so is that the right time or is uh, uh, later is the better not immediately after passing out of md or dnb but at least after one to two years of clinical experience uh, gives a better judgment for the answers excellent excellent i think that's a very very good point because some clinical insights also are important so it's not just about mugging up for the exam but knowing how to apply that knowledge so i think that also should be added so i think it should be within the first to max max 5 years because your knowledge is still fresh but at the same time some clinical acumen is added that's what uh, is that right what uh, uh, what you are trying to say is uh, yes absolutely absolutely 
anybody else has any other opinion on this please come in dr hariharan dr abhishek shubham shyam any of you i think after gaining some clinical experience is a better idea because most of the questions are clinical there so if you are not seen the different spectrum of cases you may not be able to answer it Excellent. and as you already said that uh, i mean you can't guess the answer and you can't mug it up also you have to apply mind at that time and answer it that's it perfect perfect so i think everybody agrees on this i'm going to ask uh, dr hariharan i'll start with you and then everybody how does it impact in the terms of you know what value do you think hermes diploma adds as an academic achievement and how has it made any change in your life for better worse whichever way i mean i hope it is always better because it's a matter of pride to have something which was not in india so it's always so how how, how do you look at it yeah, that is a good question sir i would say that it is essential that you keep giving such exams number one because it keeps you updated that you know what is uh, you know because what you have studied even the if you see our fishman it is not updated after 2015 Correct. so you know you you got to know what is new and what is the standard of care because it helps you not only uh, you know if you read for exam you will also apply that in your day to day practice because you will be updated about it so number one is that that it helps you to inculcate those uh, new things in your current practice and number two is obviously the academic side so like uh, you know uh, i i am interested in giving these exams because it helps me to add to my academic qualification like apart from this i am also preparing for mrcp like i have cleared part 1 so it helps me to you know uh, keep myself updated uh, with regards to everything and also it helps to see how the real life, i mean we are all used to indian uh, set of questions and exams where we have you know theoretical and factual so it is a good idea to you know see what the world how the world over the questions Excellent. are how the curriculum is you know because you, uh, what you study in india is not the ultimate uh, thing you know you have to challenge yourself or you face so i think it is important from that aspect as well excellent any other thoughts from anybody riya uh, sham shubham anybody a how how did it sort of you know did it help you in real practice having this hermes diploma do you write it proudly uh, proudly i do it i mean and definitely and i have a practical reason for that because i am an md in medicine internal medicine i am not a pulmonologist by training and uh, this was the first qualification i acquired after 20 years after being into pulmonology practice x 100% pulmonology pure pulmonology i am a interventional guy so i do all kind of interventions and i this was the first proper sort of qualification though though it it was not mandatory for me to go through the exam but still it adds some value and i think it added a lot of pride to me saying that you no know, i of course I, i was lucky enough to be in the first batch and therefore i could say i was the first person to pass out you know for this exam so and with ab so it comes first in the list always because of my names surname starts with ab but from the point of point of view of you know add value addition to your practice or your academic trainings any other thought processes please so uh, i think homes is like for me it was like an eye opener because you know when you are doing your md exam and uh, or dnb exam you are in a cocoon and when you give an international exam like this you understand that you can't you have to be master of all perfect. actually perfect perfect and, and, uh, yeah. not and not even jack of all it is a master of it's all it's master yeah. of all yeah, yeah. and uh, for that reason you know it kind of uh, tells you that you need to know almost everything about everything in pulmonology and the the homes exam gives you that platform True. true absolutely even the physiology questions they don't miss out on physiology they don't miss out on you know there is clear cut and the beauty of this particular exam is they give you diagrams diagrams radiology everything and they expect you to interpret and those things are very well printed also the quality of that preparation is very good so the the the, the ground work that goes into it is quite phenomenal because uh, i have been contributing question i know how difficult one out of five questions i post are actually go through finally yeah <laughs> so that, that that kind of filter will be there so the call i think the quality of the effort that is undergoing the infrastructure is very good and i think uh, now that you know uh, raja and the ics rajesh everybody has taken it up very seriously to bring it to india and this is the third year now unfortunately these two years we had a bit of a you know 
issue because of the um, covid so everybody was so preoccupied with covid so the actual preparatory course didn't happen but i i want any one of you has uh, gone through preparatory course and additional things you want to say about that please to say you didn't uh, Ria, no, you didn't, i didn't, didn't have uh, the opportunity okay, okay. i'll add to that sir uh, so it's uh, uh, i mean uh, if i had the opportunity when i wrote the exam yeah. i would have actually taken up the preparatory <laughs> course correct because uh, uh, so i have been in the banaras uh, preparatory course as a uh, you know uh, in the organizing uh, part yes so the, the, the thing is uh, uh, what you, what the self assessment book can give you uh, the handbook can give you in terms of insights and knowledge the uh, the summer school or the preparatory course can actually give a lot more right. and it is not just about clearing the exam but also to learn more which you uh, otherwise don't learn so much uh, while uh, doing your post graduation or even during your clinical practice so the uh, the preparatory course uh, covers everything unlike many conferences that are focused on just one topic of pulmonology or unlike uh, other conferences where it's a 3 to 4 days affair where they, you cover everything and you know you might miss out on the real aspects uh, in those conferences that would actually pertain to your clinical practice so this preparatory course i i in my opinion i felt that is very important uh, to take this course uh, besides uh, going through the guidelines yeah. and to read the uh, the handbook yeah we we would definitely encourage and i think you know the opportunity of giving in air is much better possibly because you are possibly in your kind of environment you are not into an alien city on a alien day you are not worried about that you not know, travel times and so many so many issues so i think uh, giving it in india possibly is more attractive because i plan to give it in india this time this not this but next year possibly because this i've i've been deep into covid till now so i think we are just coming out of that so i think next year i'm going to so i think probably uh, in, in, in indian destination is better of course i will not be allowed to attend a preparatory course as a student because i have been teaching in that particular course but that's a different story but still i think i am learning from you people you know so many new things which are which are fresh now so how uh, i mean one more thing which I, i i didn't do it was giving a mock exam so any of you abhishek i think you have given a mock exam isn't it Uh, um, you... i think there there were some 8 or 10 questions uh, uh, what i remember um, huh. other other than that i don't remember i mean from yeah. the mock exam some practice mcqs were there on the yeah. website the link they had given yeah, yeah. yeah while i was preparing long ago the only mcq source i would find apart from that was actually uh, from medscape medscape was a you know yeah. i used to use that and then there were you know typically at the end of the article there would be some mcq so that is that is one and i think accp comes up with a book so if i am not wrong uh, accp every year comes up with multiple choice question book on for, for on various topics so it is every year different topics so that is that probably could add some value for people who are trying to get mcqs but the That's best way if you really ask me is you know create questions with a peer group and a lot of a lot of you coming together and practicing uh, and giving questions to others and then you know seeing whether you are correct and why what went wrong so i think that might be the best way so you know in a day if you do 20 questions and those 20 questions makes you read those 20 topics properly so i think that that can be a great way of preparing so if you are preparing for say a period of 3 months or 6 months you would be mostly covering most what you are missing so on daily basis if you practice 20 question that can be a great way ahead of course apart from that add to that a preparatory course add to that a mock exam so much so on and so forth uh dr hariharan you want to add something to this or any, any other any other issues because i think i am nearly out of questions uh, right now i just want to add uh, there is a book uh, like you mentioned uh, accp or chess people they call it seek chess seek Seek, seek, so, seek. Correct. Yeah. So, in fact, that book uh, comes up more frequently, and those questions are actually very beautiful and absolutely very beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. And they're very close to this. Yeah. So that may be also one uh, source which the students who are planning to give should use because you know th- those questions mimic the ERS pattern. Correct. Sham, your input uh, on this. Yeah. So there's the one one more source which people could go through is the. Uh, there are certain set of questions for the specialty certificate of mrcp pulmonology questions 
Okay. DLC, Palmology, so they have certain handbooks and there are some websites also which help you prepare for uh, DSE. So people could even uh, look up that actually, if you want practice and questions. But I feel attending the preparatory course uh, and, you know, the, the best part about the preparatory course is it cramps everything into a nutshell. Yeah. And it, you know, highlights, talks about every topic, it will talk about the best trials and uh, you know the the landmark trials and how where the evidence is actually generated from uh, regarding that particular uh, topic so the preparatory course that way i feel you know had it be, had been there during my time in india it would have i definitely would have uh, taken it because it uh, it helps us especially those in clinical practice not finding a lot of time to study uh, it helps you you know uh, concentrate your efforts on those particular topics and uh, prepare effectively Correct, correct. I think um, uh, any, any any of you have any suggestions as to you know where because I already put my heart out there saying that give the exam in India. So do you have a recommendation that you should go there and give it or go uh, or give it in India? Where where do you think people should be uh, appearing? What's your better recommendation? Of course, I think, my time I there is no choice. If, if if ERS is physically there and you are planning to attend the ERS, it might be a good idea to Correct. give it there. But uh, if only for going for the exam and you know it, it, that is the best thing about uh, ERS being conducted in India that you can give it in Kolkata. It you know it actually reduces your cost. So I would definitely uh, yeah. you know I would congratulate the ICS for starting this initiative in India. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. There is no question about it. In fact, Raja has been big time. Doctor Dhar has been big time instrumental in setting this up. Doctor Rajesh Sarnakar has been another force behind this. And then there is a team of so many other faculties which who have contributed. So I think there are people who are there to help. In fact, one more thing I will. Uh, in fact, this is more like an appeal to all of you, because I was officially invited to be a mentor. For I've I've done it for somebody in Iran, and then I have done it for somebody in um, God knows you know Venice, Venezuela. I mean I I don't remember who my mentee were. So I have mentored people individually, and mentoring means again giving you know this this same kind of tips that I am right now parting out or what you people are telling, and then how to prepare. So I think uh, all of you who are pass outs, Ria is a super scholar there. So I think uh, she is the gold medalist there. So I, I think so, so much you can give to the juniors in I the terms of the, being mentors. The next year of passing out, uh, ERS had uh, had me as a mentor. As a mentor, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And I, I think, think it's very and they always invite them. Me. They invite me. Very nice of them, yes. very good gesture. Very generous of them, yes. And 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 once once you once you are a mentor, then you know you understand what difficulties. Totally different country, all kind of different problems. So you really don't know what how to solve some of them, you know, because they just don't have access to some of those things. So of course, international mentoring is different, but Indian mentoring, I think, is much much easier. We can do it for our people because we are in a similar geographic and social political cultural kind of environment our problems are very similar so i think uh, you know that syncing it with the european thinking because finally the exam is actually designed in europe and so we have to fine tune that you know as as i said about tuberculosis their lookout on tuberculosis is different from our lookout on tuberculosis our mdr is a different ball game altogether their mdr is a, it's a one rare kind of a situation so i think the, we have to understand and adjust it slightly when you are answering those questions which are tricky so i think that that you know that fine tuning or tweaking is also required Definitely. About the mentorship, I would like to add, sir. So, please, uh, please. Uh, the, the mentorship, I think, is offered to the most uh, diplomats uh, of the exam. So, yeah. I've done that twice on the uh, I, uh, after passing the exam. So, yeah. uh, and it was all for the uh, Indian students. Uh, the thing is, it so, you know, the passing of this exam also gives you that opportunity to get in touch with people who will be writing the exam. And it also helps you grow your own network of pulmonologists. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would like to add is, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, who are 
wishing or thinking about passing or writing the exam they ask me is there a difference in the questions and the passing rate if they write in the country compared with when they write during the ers congress so okay. uh, i would like to add to that that there is no difference in the uh, quality of questions or uh, the overall structure of the exam or uh, it is not the questions are not just pertaining to the indian aspect and they are no more like Absolutely. need and uh, and uh, and the pass rate is also uh, if you study well it is as good as uh, if you write it uh, during ers congress and uh, in fact uh, let me mention that you know and and it's with a lot of pride because this is something which is unique because my very senior dr madhav kali has appeared for this exam at the age of 72 and he has passed with flying colors so in fact that's that's you know look at the kind of dedication that this person would be having to appear for a self assessment exam at the age of 72 and now is 76 78 so i think he is a shining example for people who think that nahi yaar md ho gaya dnb ho gaya mdm ho gaya bahut pad liya abhi kya padhna hai aur so i think you never stop learning isn't it i think so that that's that's something and you never stop self assessing so i think that self assessment is a key here and i think it 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 should encourage people to you know that with that kind of an example it's an example for all of us i i always look up to him for anything and he at that stage said i am appearing within you now have to give me tips i said sir aapko sab aata hai hum aap aap hame sikhate ho so with, with that so that was the enthusiasm he had on this like uh any any other inputs from anywhere and uh, i am nearly at the end of question so please think of anything and please feel free to talk otherwise i am going to take a last so so any other topic which you want to raise before we take the last round from everybody i i just have a, I have a question actually yes please uh, please matlab i am i always wonder that uh, like uh, passing this hermes exam yeah uh, what uh, like benefit can can we have some uh, uh, like use of this degree like going to europe for doing some fellowship or i mean i don't know i'm I, i'm unaver of this but yeah. i just thought ki no oh, in fact might... in fact i have been uh, attending the hermes cocktail every year not because i like the cocktail <laughs> i like to meet people <laughs> basically and they arrange it you know the hermes cocktails are arranged on the pre pre hermes day so it it will be the day of the workshops if i'm not wrong so uh, on on that day evening or or uh, no sorry it's it's in the first or second day of the conference so it is uh, a little later and uh, uh, in fact they allow you an opportunity and they sort of you know drive you in into writing papers uh, you know coming with clinical ideas uh, uh, so ev- in every possible way so some of the best people in ers the official dignitaries as well as the best brains in europe and respective society come and attend that particular hermes cocktail dinner or whatever that is and uh, uh, and it's a very enjoyable experience to mix up with the greats in that particular you know and one of the occasions it was peter barnes and you no know, no the very senior people come and attend so it it is it's a very good idea to keep networking with them and uh, it i mean it, it doesn't guarantee you a opportunity straight away you are not pre qualified for but but at the same time and in addition to that if somebody wants to practice in europe for some reason he automatically becomes a preferred candidate so in fact that's that's another thing and uh, as the luck would have it uh, they have elf that is european lung foundation has a recommendation for people in india or every country every every country in the world so they put you on a list which is again a unique advantage to you that they put you on a list of preferred physicians or chest physicians in this case because you are a, if you are a critical care diplomat you will be given a preference there so your name comes on their website and it's automatically there so you are recommended so if somebody says i am going to say a country like india and i am going to be in a city like pune which doctor to go to so automatically my name will come there because i am a hermes diplomat or dr madhav kale's name will be there on that so i think it 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 gets registered so there is some value nationally as well nationally to definitely no question because it's a matter of it sort of looked up as a international exam in a way so many people will be thinking that you are i said yeah, i passed it in berlin so i said berlin me training liya that's what they think so 
they are free to think that way we can't help it we are not lying but at the same time they think like that so that's that's different story but i think even a recognition from a international body like european lung foundation is a very uh, you know heartening thing because your name goes on their website as a rec- as a preferred uh, uh, referral doctor for a lung problem in india if if they are if the travelers are there so they they it goes on their recommendation that's something good and plus the opportunity to network so with that i think uh, any other questions burning questions or anything uh, otherwise i'm going to take a uh, uh, call on you know asking give you two minutes of free talk everybody and then i think we'll wind up in good time so let's start with the first uh, that is sham you are there yeah, 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 so yeah. you are you are the you are the senior most among these people 2017 so let's start with you then we'll go to dr harir and then everybody else yeah so my and message we'll, would be and we'll take riya as the last because she is the gold medalist so she is, she should have the last laugh so my message would be i feel uh, people who are interested in giving the course should definitely attend the preparatory course because it helps them uh, it definitely helps them minimize their efforts and prepare uh, help you prepare efficiently so that's one uh, tip from my side go through all the guidelines uh, diligently and uh, especially the european guidelines the european guidelines for major ild uh, european guidelines for uh, you know fungal infections tb etc embolisms don't ignore uh, cardiopulmonary exercise testing that is one uh, thing where you know especially the the exam i gave there were at least 10 to 15 questions on cpet wow and uh, <laughs> i was we, least... we have the machine now after, <laughs> after so many years our, yeah. our hospital so, has the machine now but it wasn't there that for so many so years so i actually to be frank did not know to imp- interpret it well and they asked tough clinical scenarios just like how they ask uh, related to pfts they used to ask those so don't even ignore those kind of uh, you know i think that's a very good point very good point so uh, so that's uh, that's from my side so best of luck for who are all uh, you know going to give the exam but uh, try to attend the preparatory course it's definitely it will give you a direction as to where to how to where you where to invest your efforts in for the exam perfect uh, we'll go move to dr hariharan yeah so i think uh, most of the things have been said by all the experts uh, so i would wish uh, the people who are planning to give the exam uh, and I, i think the preparatory course is also going to be conducted uh, i am not aware when it yes, is yes 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 this year yes okay yes okay so i think so because even i didn't attend so yeah it will uh, be an offline one it. proper one yeah. and and Continue. now now that we are got used to so many online things so we are also also going to be doing it online so it will be both offline and online Yeah, yeah. I so I think that would really make a difference and give you a feel of the exam. And as a, you have to be, you know, clinical, you, clinical questions are the must. So just don't mug up, uh, uh, you know, factual things. They hardly ask factual things. They yeah. will definitely ask you long, lengthy uh, questions. So be prepared for that. Perfect. And uh, all the best, everyone. Yes, thank you, thank you, from you, Dr. Abhishek. uh so i i think i don't have anything to add whatever dr sham and dr hari arana uh, i totally agree with you and uh, preparatory course would obviously give you a better direction it would give you all the material in correct so that will definitely that is definitely going to increase the chances of clearing the exam in the first attempt otherwise yeah. then sometimes when you have to give two attempts then then you feel like okay i i thought i might have cleared i i would have done that mm-hmm. so that feeling would not be there <laughs> if you yeah. do but don't get you know that is another message don't get disappointed because yeah. there, i know at least at least 10 people who have given it second time and have yeah. passed with flying colors and the second yeah. time you really did do it better so just in case something goes wrong don't get disappointed don't, don't get disheartened and you read so much so more you are much more knowledgeable than the other guys who have passed in the first attempt <laughs> <time. laughs> yeah okay uh, shubham uh, any your last oh, exactly the same thing sir uh, uh, preparatory course yes exam yes absolutely uh, yes handbook yes reading the guidelines yes so do all of that instead of any one of them absolutely absolutely and we'll come to the gold medal is the as the last dr riya your final conclusion mark I, i think uh, my year was the lucky year from which uh, ics brought homies to india and i think it's a super opportunity to have it in our own country so every young budding pulmonologist should you know take advantage of what y'all are bringing to us okay. and uh, 
as for everyone has said i agree with them but just lastly if you don't know the answer to any question think of it practically what you would do in practice and yeah. you know something will strike absolutely absolutely yeah. i that that's the key to become the topper huh? so we, we we understood her secret so think clinically yes and what you would do in that kind of a situation so it it does make a lot of sense because in fact the entire purpose of this whole thing uh and 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 uh, i think it was uh, lorden kemper at that time robert lorden kemper he is one of the very senior most guys one of the first people who did medical thoracoscopy who was the first person who conceived of this exam and he was the first in charge of that at that point in time and they said that the our main emphasis is that clinical thinking should be promoted so i think that was the best important message that they wanted to drive and you have exactly hit it absolutely bullseye no question about it so i think that is a very very good parting message from your side also uh with that i am done and i'm going to give you i think encourage you everybody who's listening to this the juniors who haven't done it seniors who are sort of you know in the college and teaching they should encourage their juniors to get into this kind of an exam it's a lot of self self assessment it's a introspection into it it's updating as so many people have said repeatedly because the guidelines and you know things have kept changing and this world is ever changing so i think the scenarios will keep changing so i think it's an opportunity having that you know preparatory course in india and having the hermes uh, this this will be hermes 3 so it will be a great opportunity for much much larger indians and in fact let us be proud that out of those thousand odd people more than 500 are indians so that that speaks volumes about you know uh, how important and popular this exam in the our country is possible not because we are large in numbers because there are there, there is china also but there are not more hermes diplomats in china than in india they are much smaller in number so it's not just by the local sankhya that we are counting, you know uh, getting there so i think more interested doctors are emerging from india and i think it does put us into a it it does give us a, give us an international perspective so indian settings are different we are we know we are geographically different socially culturally politically so everything is different from europe and at the same time we are so much so similar in the thinking and guidelines and clinical thinking and you know bedside learning we are not like americans where ct scan is done first and then uh, the patient you know will be examined so it, it oh, i'm sorry sorry if i'm hurting anybody please that's our name and not my intention but the european thinking has been clinical thinking first and then do as needed so so the investigations are not sort of bombarded onto you so it's a very very clinical thinking community as a whole so i and i i like europe entirely for that so i think with that thing in mind it is closer to our hearts so if you if you really see our thinking is very similar to them because as a country also we can't afford law, ex- excessive investigations so the clinical thinking is important and then then you know guide it to the shortest possible way with the best possible evidence to the conclude concluding remark and therefore that approach is very close to ours so i think therefore er is scores over any other exam in in that sense you know the the the, the hermes scores over the any other similar exam which anybody else wants to be doing so it is worthwhile doing it and it will encourage you to do it like every 10 years like what i am now encouraged to do it so i think you will be updated till the uh, end of your th- you know brain is as long as your brain keeps thinking dr kale did it at the age of 72 so i think we all should be encouraged to do all that so i think with that uh, i am through with it thank you very much dr shubham dr riya dr shyam dr abhishek and dr hariharan in every one of you has contributed so much to all the people who are wanna be uh, hermes diplomats and i hope this year we will pro- probably have the highest number and the preparatory course as well as for the exams so with that uh, i hand it over to the technical guys and the uh, hermes uh, backup team so please i am done thank you very much for your kind attendance any any anything else you want to say arya please stay no thank you very much sir, for having uh, all of us and uh, thanks to you and to raja dar sir for having us Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank In fact, so much, thanks Dr. to Raja for being the real brain behind the Hermes India. No, if it's, it's his his uh, child, and he has brought it up beautifully. No question. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Abhyankar. Thank you for holding the program together. Thanks to all our panelists. I think 
our delegates are motivated enough and uh, they have learned a great deal from today's webinar from key insights to all other details how to prepare for the exam and various things and with the preparatory course round the corner on 29th and 30th of october happening offline in vpci delhi i think it will be a lot of benefit for our indian candidates as well so thank you so much thanks to the technical team for having this webinar uh, run so smoothly thank you so much namaskar thank you thanks everybody bye bye have a wonderful year ahead and let's let's hope i pass my exam also <laughs> <laughs> yes bye bye thank you sir thank you sir thank Thanks. you thank you